Hello everyone and welcome to another video. So today we are on to week three of our flight mechanics class. So I thought we would just go through our usual routine of taking a look at what we are doing in terms of the lecture schedule for this week as well as going over the homework. So to just jump into it, it's actually a uh, pretty natural progression from what we were doing last week. So just to refresh your memory, remember last week we started talking about this Euler angle and Euler rotation sequence and basically getting us uh, a rotation matrix going from the northeast down or the east north up frame to the body frame. So we are now going to want to extend that idea now um, to look at how do we actually compute those Euler angles if we are given things like potentially like rate gyro measurements. So that's this first video right here. We are going to now continue on this the idea of a uh, rotation matrix but now extend this to what's known as the Euler kinematical equations and Poisson's kinematical equations and like I said earlier all this is doing is it's allowing us an algorithm or a methodology to basically compute or keep track of the attitude of the aircraft namely the Euler angles phi theta and psi if we know something else like perhaps like the um, angular velocity vector in the body frame right the PQR something that we might be able to read from like rate gyros so that's what this first video is discussing. Um, we're going to see that this is actually a pretty intuitive approach and methodology, but it's got some shortcomings um, and it's a nice academic discussion, but it might not actually be the best way to go about doing that. So that leads to our second video down here, a more um, robust and sort of industry standard way of achieving the exact same goal, again, namely of just keeping track of the attitude of the aircraft basically computing the phi, theta, and psi, is to use um, what are known as quaternions. And we're going to see that these quaternions um, add and augment this system by basically uh, eliminating some of those problem singularities and some of these problem issues that might be introduced here if you use the Euler kinematical equations or Poisson's kinematical equations. So again, all we're talking about during week three here is a couple of different ways to skin this cat of trying to keep track of the attitude. So there's the Euler kinematical equations, Poisson's kinematical equations, and quaternions, and we're going to compare and contrast all of these methods this week. So, that's the game plan of the new material that's coming out um, this week. Let's take a look at the homework and see how that maps. So, over here on the other side of the screen, I've got the homework. The first problem, if you read through this, actually, this is a slight extension of week two. So, this is still talking about the direction cosine matrix that we developed out here in um, kind of lecture 2C, right? So, I'm just asking a couple of things about what does this direction cosine matrix look like? What are its properties? Um, for example, can you show me that this is, can be written as a unitary matrix? And if so, are there certain values of of uh, these arguments, phi theta or psi, or these, these Euler angles that will make this uh, overall rotation matrix singular. So again, problem one is kind of an extension from, pro, uh, from, from week number two, okay? Now, let's keep going now. Problem two of the homework set, now we're gonna start getting into uh, some of the newer material that we're discussing here during week three. Now, problem two is actually um this is actually just a matlab simulating problem this has nothing to do with flight mechanics all i want you to do in problem two is get ready to be interacting with matlab and simulink together so um if you've taken uh, a previous class with me we've already probably gone over this video here where i discuss how to interact with a simulink model from a matlab script um, what that's going to do, and just to refresh your memory, let me kind of pull over the video. So again, feel free to check out this video. Um, if you don't recall this discussion, all I do in this video is basically show how to um, have data in MATLAB sent over to Simulink and then vice versa, namely how to take data that you might generate in Simulink and then export it and send that back to MATLAB. So this is basically a video that will help you get familiar with how to send data to and from Simulink and MATLAB and vice versa. Okay, so that's all this is. Um, this problem is really a kind of a choose your own adventure. All I want you to do is generate some fictitious data in MATLAB and then send it over to Simulink. 
do some manipulation of it in Simulink, and then send it back to MATLAB. So again, I'll let you read through this. This is not going to be really graded to uh, or, or looked at too hard in the grading process. I just want people to get familiar and comfortable working in both MATLAB and Simulink and having data flow between the two of them. Okay, so problem two, it's really kind of do something yourself. Uh, just kind of prove to us that you are able to do this. Um, and it's it's a bit of a choose your own adventure. Now, the reason I want to make sure everyone is familiar with how to get data in and out of MATLAB and Simulink is because in problem three, what I'd like to start doing is looking at this Euler kinematical equation. And in fact, you're going to derive some of these, these, these results. Um, in fact, we talk about this in the video. So hopefully these equations are going to make a lot more sense when you uh, watch lecture 3A. Okay, but then what I'd like to do, if, if you look at this long enough, all we're doing here is this is allowing us a method to keep track of the Euler angles, namely phi theta and psi, if we know P, Q, and R, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to supply a data set here, this homework 3 P3 data dot mat. This has 10, uh, 10 columns here, and all this does is it's basically uh, a data set, right? So the first column is time, the second column is U, third column is V, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? So what I would like you to do is to use data from these first seven columns, right? Feed it into our um, Euler kinematical equation. So you're going to build a Simulink model of this that is going to implement this set of equations. And then you're going to feed it with, these, with, with data coming from the first seven columns. And then what you're going to do is you are then going to compute your versions of phi, theta, and psi, which you can then compare with the data that I provide in columns 8, 9, and 10. So all I want to do here with this problem is make sure that everyone can build a Simulink model that implements this set of equations. And basically, you can feed data in, compute some outputs, and then comp compare your outputs with my outputs right that's all we're doing so this problem problem number three it's really an exercise in implementing Euler's kinematical equations and then implementing them in Simulink and basically feeding data in and comparing it to um, some check truth data hopefully we're all on the same page um, and then problem four is also working with effectively Euler's kinematical equations I would like you to consider like if the vehicle was in a steady state turn right what does that really mean in the context of these equations? And I don't want to say too much about this without giving the entire problem away, but I will say um, maybe the easiest way to think about this is imagine the vehicle is in a steady state turn. What does phi dot, theta dot, and psi dot look like in that situation? And if you know that, if you know what this looks like effectively, what does that mean for the consequences of P, Q, and R, right? That 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 constrains certain things. That should basically have some interesting relationships pop free out of this. Okay, so um, that's all I'm asking for in problem four is a little bit of a thought experiment of okay, if you've got a vehicle or an aircraft that's just going in a steady coordinated turn, what does that really mean in terms of what is P, Q, and R doing? What is phi dot, theta dot, psi dot doing? Et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So again, problem four, maybe don't overthink it too much. You don't have to write any simulations or run anything. It's basically just think about it a little bit, provide a couple of equations to back up your thinking, and hopefully um, that will be kind of a little bit interesting. Um, yeah, what should uh, else should I mention? I think that's pretty much it. So yeah, week three is pretty straightforward. Um, we're a little bit lighter on the uh, lecture material. Hopefully that gives you a little more time to work on the homework. So again, let me know if anyone has questions. Otherwise, I think this is probably a great spot to leave it. Um, and send me an email if you've got questions. Thanks, everybody.